Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am so excited to have with me today Romy Newman. She is the co-founder and president of Fairy God Boss. Yes, you heard me right. Fairy God Boss. I love it. A business with a, mis- with a mission to improve the workplace for women everywhere. Before venturing into the crazy world of entrepreneurship, Romy ran digital advertising sales and operations at the Wall Street Journal and also worked in marketing at Google and Estee Lauder. Wow, Romy, you have an amazing background. Romy is a frequent speaker and contributor to Fortune, Huffington Post, and Inc. She's also a proud mom of two, wife to a very supportive husband, a devoted yogi, and a crossword puzzle lover. Romy is highly motivated to bring better performance and productivity to our companies and our country by making the workplace work better for women. Romy, you are a woman after my own heart in so many ways. Let's start with, I'm so excited to have you here today. Fairy God Boss. So how did you come up with that name and the concept? Yeah, so uh, my co-founder and I both used to be executives at the Wall Street Journal. And unfortunately, one day there was a terrible management shakeup and my co-founder was unexpectedly fired. And when that happened, no one knew it, but she was two months pregnant. So no one knew, there was no discrimination at play, but my co-founder quickly realized she was going to have to embark on a job search basically while visibly pregnant. And so it became extremely important for her to be able to do research about different companies and how they treated women how they treated working mothers. She wanted to know were, this, were these the kinds of companies where she would still have, com- have real opportunities to advance and excel even as a mother and a woman. She wanted to know were these the kind of companies where she could leave at 5.30 to make it home in time to relieve her nanny. She wanted to know what the maternity leave policies were for the company, but she couldn't find that information anywhere online. She was doing her job search. She was trying to get answers to these questions. She could not find that information. So she had this idea to build the ultimate resource and that would provide this kind of information to women who are job seekers and then even beyond women who are just engaged in their career, providing a resource for career-minded women. Um, So that was the evolution of the product. In terms of the name, We always knew that we wanted a name that was a little bit whimsical and a little bit fun. And this idea that um, we wanted to really bring together women to help other women. And so the the idea behind our name is that every woman in our community is a fairy god boss because just by participating in our community, she is helping other women advance in the workplace. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Romy, thank thank you you and your co-founder for doing this for women everywhere. It is so needed. Thank you. Yes. Well, we've definitely found great traction and we've got a a pretty loyal user base Um, and we've evolved because we started out sort of just providing information to women who were on the job search. Um, But what we quickly realized is that women have a lot of what we call hard to ask questions about career that are not just about job transition or job search, but it could be about a particular situation. I'm, I feel like I'm having trouble having my, uh, getting my boss to identify uh, my, my achievements, or I feel like I'm, I'm overwhelmed with work and my boss isn't helping me manage through it, or I want to ask for a raise and how should I do it? Or I feel like I was spoken over in a meeting. And so we have this robust anonymous community where our participants can engage, ask questions, answer questions, and kind of come together around career. Wow, that is amazing. And is it for both women who are employees 
and women who are business owners? Is it every level all across the board or is it something in Yes, a hundred percent. I mean, and well beyond because a, a, a lot of our corporate partners are just that. We work with the largest uh, enterprises in the country. Um, we're really lucky to count among our customers, uh, Apple and Goldman Sachs and Microsoft, IBM. Um, and so, you know, our, we're, a lot of our membership comes from within those organizations as well. That's fabulous. I want to ask you about one of the things that really stood out to me in your bio, which is you mentioned that you want to bring better performance and productivity to our companies, which I totally get, and our country by making the workplace better. So tell me about making it better for our country. Um, well, this is just founded in the concept that I firmly believe that better decisions are made by diverse groups of decision makers. Um, and so when there are, is more diversity within a company, many research studies show that there's better financial performance, better decision making, more innovation. And I think we're in a place right now where we see a lot of companies, corporations kind of taking the leadership stance on topics and areas that our government doesn't. Um, so an example of that would clearly be maternity leave. So um, as you probably know, we are the only developed country in the world that doesn't have a federally mandated maternity leave program. And so what you see is that a lot of companies, large corporates, fortunately do fill in the blank and kind of set the standard or raise the bar around paid leave. Um, but so by positioning more women in leadership roles in corporations, hopefully it can continue to sort of influence our government and our company, our, our country toward more gender equal um, policies, programs, culture. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, one thing I would, I would sort of say or add to that is I, um, I think, uh, you know, Lean In is a, the, of a controversially received book these days, but I always mm -hmm. kind of go back to the opening chapter of it, which was um, that um, Sheryl Sandberg was working at Google and she was, she was on the executive team and she became pregnant. And she realized that there was no special parking for pregnant women. And she was having to haul herself all the way from the farthest <laughs> reaches of the parking <laughs> lot to get to, uh, to get to the office. And she thought, oh, it wouldn't it make so much sen sense to have special reserve parking for pregnant women so they don't have to walk so far. And I love that anecdote. And I love that story because it's just it explains why we need more diverse representation all the time in all reaches of companies and government because it's not because anybody didn't care about pregnant women or how far they had to walk it was that it wasn't top of mind for anyone it wasn't raised as a concern and until you have somebody who's having that experience in those leadership roles the change doesn't come oh my gosh that is so powerful thank you for doing that for our country for the women and for the companies and every person being so inclusive in what you're talking about because i 100 percent agree with you i have seen it in my own business that it has grown stronger faster the more diverse i become so thank you so much for that great i love it so could we talk a little bit about and you know what my microphone yeah, I do have my microphone on right. I thought for a minute I didn't have my microphone on right. So um, could we talk a little bit about you personally and how you, um, what your journey was as a mom, as an employee, a, a top executive, um, and then into the entrepreneur world? So, yeah, you know, you can absolutely. start anywhere you want and go anywhere you want with yeah. that. <laughs> so I was, I've been really fortunate to work at some incredible companies like Estee Lauder and Google, and then most recently at the Wall Street Journal. And I had an incredible experience there. I was there for seven years and I connected with that company and that product and that organization, just like a, a hand in a glove. I loved the people I worked with. I loved going to work every day. I was really proud of the work we did. Um, in terms of, of robust and objective journalism. And so um, 
you know, I think in my head, I always thought I'm going to be a CEO one day. I'm just going to keep working my way up the ladder, up the ladder, up the ladder. And then um, hopefully I will become the CEO. And then mm. I had a baby. <laughs> and mm. even when I was pregnant, I thought, oh, nothing will change. I'll still be a CEO. And then, I mean, almost like immediately after I had my son, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be a CEO. Um, because I will never be able to give everything to a job and be the kind of mother I feel I need to be at the same time, at least for the next, you know, like 20 years. <laughs> and it, <laughs> Just 20 years. <laughs> yeah. And it isn't, it isn't because I don't think it's possible. And I, you know, coming, I still have those ambitions and coming around and doing it now, I see it's possible, but I, what it isn't possible, the way it's not possible is based on the inflexibility that corporations demand and, and less so, right? Like this is, I, my son's turning is almost, he just turned nine. So this is already going back 10 years and I think the world has changed a lot. But um, I knew, for example, that I was like, I was not gonna always be able to get to work by nine. And when you're a leader in a culture where being at work by nine is required and you can't get there by nine, how can you make that work, right? Um, so, I started to kind of realize I was going to take a less conventional track. And I, I tried to make it work for a while. And I have to say, I, I, then I had my daughter soon after. And the company was so extraordinary to me um, that they actually eventually let me go down to three days a week and keep my senior level executive role, um, which is really wow. unprecedented. Yeah, that I That is amazing. It was so incredible. And I'm so deeply grateful to them. And I actually look back, one of my deepest regrets is that I didn't do a better job making that work. Um, I think I ended up feeling just utterly conflicted living that way because I felt like I wasn't doing a good enough job at work. And then I still felt like I wasn't doing a good enough job at home. And so I wish I had lowered my own standards for myself, taken, <laughs> taken a deep breath and made it work because I think there would have been a tremendous amount of value in showing the universe <laughs> that a woman yes. could thrive and excel in an executive role three days a week and what that would have meant and shown the world. Um, but I but Romy, of, women still have that conflict all the time. Yes. So yes, but I wish I could back. have shown the world that you, that, <laughs> that you could put women in executive roles on a reduced schedule and it would have a great outcome. Mm -hmm. And I think that would have been yeah. a game changer. And instead, I kind of showed that it didn't work, and I wish that hadn't been the case. Yeah, Romy, what do you? What would you tell women now who are having that same conflict of, I'm un, I'm not happy when I'm at work because I'm thinking about my kids. I'm not happy when I'm with my kids because I'm thinking about work, and I don't feel like I'm giving my best to either one. Yeah, I think. What it's, would you? What would you tell them? I think it is an incredibly difficult balance to strike. I think that um, there's a lot of value, and I think there's no wrong decision, by the way, and I think everybody has to right. do what's right for them, um, and mm -hmm. everyone's situation is different. Everybody has different support outside the workplace. Everyone has uh, maybe a spouse or a partner who can give more or less, or maybe they're a single mother. The, all those things are on a range, right? Or maybe they, they have a family close by that can help. So what you, what you have in terms of home infrastructure so greatly can impact your ability to deliver at work. There's just a huge range, right? But I think that um, ultimately, if you can find work that you love and that really um, like gets you going, it will, it will make it worthwhile. And so I think usually the real problem there is that you're not loving the work enough because if you love the work mm. enough, it will take your mind off kind of that feeling of guilt. And then you will, and it will, you will bring that positivity home with you. And I think there's a real benefit. There's a lot that your children will benefit from by seeing you work. Um, as an example, you know, I, I think certainly during this whole COVID phase, my kids have been home with me watching me work. And now my son wants to start a business. Um, oh, that's great. And so, yeah, it's incredible. So I think there's real benefit to what your kids absorb when they see you work. Yeah. And, you know, whether you're doing what you love to do or you're not doing what you love to do, your kids are noticing that you are a role model for your children, whichever thing you're doing, however you're doing it. Yeah. So I always say, do what you love so that you can be a great role model for your children because wouldn't yes. you want your children to do what they love? 
Right. And also, especially now that we're in the middle of this crazy, difficult world of COVID and, and home distance learning and uh, crazy responsibilities, it's actually just so incredible that we're having, we're, we're in self-care mode and that we're really taking care of ourselves. And I think often we equate self-care with like taking time off work or um, whatever it is, but the reality, you know, doing yoga, but the reality is work if you love work, it can be your self-care. You know what, Romy? I have never thought about it like that. I love that. Because the other day I was thinking, somebody said, what are you going to do for fun over the Labor Day weekend? And I thought, what am I going to do for fun? I thought, what do I like anymore? And then I realized I have fun at work. Right. I have more fun at work than almost anything I do. That's right. That's right. And uh, if you don't, what do you, if, you're, if you're not in a job that kind of like get your juices going, go find mm -hmm. one. Yes. So Romy, for those people, because I was one of them, uh, fortunately a long, long time ago now, but I was very much one of them who was not happy at work and I didn't think I had another option. I didn't know how to do anything else. I didn't believe it was possible. And I know there are a lot of people out there like that now. What's your advice for them? Yeah. So I have to credit this advice to my co-founder, Georgine, who has just taught me that we can all do so much more than we think we can do. And I think, especially because I came up with sort of a more traditional corporate background, I thought, okay, these are the skills I have, right? I do strategy, I do marketing, I do finance. I have degrees in those things. That's what I do. Um, and she, when we started the business, we needed to do all kinds of other things. We needed to do SEO and PR. We needed to write content. And I remember thinking, well, I, I can't do those things. I've never been trained to do those things. I've never done those things. Um, and specifically the one where we had to start writing content. I thought, oh, I just came from the Wall Street Journal. And the people who wrote the content there are the kinds of people that win Pulitzer Prizes. Like I can't just write, God, I did not go to journalism <laughs> school. I cannot just write content. <laughs> And you know I what? Love that. She taught me I can. It might not win a Pulitzer Prize, but there's I can do so much more than my narrow definition of myself. And the you we all can. And the only way yes. we can learn that is to try. And I will tell you, kind of in a different analogy, I failed high school gym and I went on to run three marathons. And I did it by putting <sighs> one foot in front of the other. We can all do so much more. And the 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 world always wants to kind of limit what they think we can do, but we don't need to help them by creating our own limitations. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Don't create your own limitations. No. Yeah. Because the world, the world is go always going to try to keep you small. Right. Right. right? Unfortunately. Um, so any other tips for people who are looking at you now and going, yeah, of course, Romy has it all. She worked at Google and at Estee Lauder and at Wall Street Journal, but I don't have all that. Yeah. I mean, again, I think it's all about getting really smart and savvy about how you're presenting yourself and positioning yourself. And by that, I mean, um, I'm a salesperson, right? I've become a salesperson later in my career. So what is your <laughs> unique selling proposition, right? Um, I, I excel at project management and databasing and social media, right? Like pick three. And let me give you some specific examples of how I do that. And that's how I will add value to it. So I think it's so much less about what's on your resume, so much more about how you're, you're, you have to be your own publicist. You have to go to work crafting an excellent, well-packaged story about the value you bring. And that's what's going to get you there. And it has to be really tangible and really well thought out. I love that. So any tips on um, how to have that unique selling proposition? Yes. Because a lot of people are like, I'm not unique. Of course, everyone is. Um, but I think it's about looking back and figuring out what are your, what are your proudest moments? What are the, the, the contributions you've made you're most proud of? And they can be anything, right? But that can help you identify where the thread of your story can go and find a friend and a friend can definitely help you with this. I definitely recommend workshopping this with someone else. But what are, what were the things you've done that you've liked? What were the things you've done that you feel you've made real impact with? And then build a story around those. Yeah. You know, I, 
um, about four years ago, I met a woman, her name's Kate, and she came to me and she said, somebody told me to talk to you. I don't really think you can help me because I have been a stay-at-home mom for 15 years. All I've done, and she went on to list things that I could never accomplish, like homeschooling three children, yeah. yep. um, you know, managing uh, her household yeah. and volunteering and doing managing of volunteer stuff yeah. and playing the bagpipe. Right. Right. In that case, I think it, you know, in her case, I think it's about networking and it doesn't have to be, you know, connections that you, you, you don't know who you don't know. Who do you know through your community, through your school? Who, and you have to get really aggressive about networking and get that unique selling proposition story out and take people coffee and say, look, I've been out of the workplace, but here's the what, same thing. Here's what I'm really good at. I'm good at raising mm -hmm. money because I can show you that because I worked on three auctions. I'm good at right. project management because I homeschooled, through, whatever it is. These are things I'm really good at. I really want to get back into work. And what I would say is just take that person out to lunch and say, well, who would you recommend I talk to? Is there someone you'd recommend? And ask them for five introductions. And just you're just going to mm -hmm. go have 100 coffees. Um, and I mentioned this earlier, but one of the – like. The day that I think like the world became clear to me was the day I really switched into sales because I did not start my career in sales. I moved into sales when I was like 35. And what that taught me was don't take rejection personally. We all take rejection so permanent personally and it is, it is the worst kind of deterrent. It's what keeps us from trying new things because we're so afraid of getting rejected. But instead we have to look at everything in terms of numbers, right? So. If you ask 100 people for coffee and expect 10 of them to say yes, what a win. So don't expect, you know, don't ask 10 people for coffee and expect 10 people to say yes. Ask 100 and expect 10 and then you feel good. <laughs> and when people say, mm -hmm. no, it's not about you, it mm -hmm. isn't, whatever it is. No. And same thing for applying for jobs. If you are not applying to 100 jobs, you're not going to get one, right? Like everything has to be done a huge volume. Um, and so sometimes, you know, we apply for one job and we don't get it and we feel like, oh, I'm not worthwhile. I can't get this job. But really, there were probably a hundred other applicants to that job. And it is all just a law of numbers. And I'm now going to shout out my stepmother, who's an incredible lady who took 15 years off um, to stay home with her kids and has incredible kids. Um, and now just got back um, to become the CFO of a company. And, I love it. Yeah. And she just. <laughs> that is she, so exciting. She networked and hustled and, and took on projects until she was able to get herself there. And so it's, it's possible. It's really possible. Yeah. Well, um, I have good news for you that Kate is doing quite well. Um, I dug a little bit deeper and found out that before she became a mom, she was an engineer. That's and I asked her what she liked about that. And she really loved problem solving and putting things together and, and you know, planning it all out. And she def she tried a couple of different things and she discovered she absolutely loves building websites. Yeah. So she taught herself how to do that. And yeah. now she has an incredibly thriving company doing that. See? And so she probably, like, if you asked her whatever a year ago, can you build a website? She was probably like, I can't, I, why, why, why? Exactly. I don't know how to build a website. Oh, yeah. Right? She, That's exactly she can build what a she website. said. She just had to learn it. Right. That's right. right. That's right. And she's loving it and she feels so good about everything. And like you, um, her son, she's got four children that are wonderful. And her son has decided to also become a business owner himself. I love it. What a great story. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you love those stories? And we have so many of them, which is great. But if you don't try, if you don't put yourself out there, like you're suggesting, if you don't accept that you're going to get no's and yeses, and that's okay, yeah, you're not going to ever be able to see how big you can be, how much of an impact you can have on this world. Right. And no's are not a value judgment on you. Every, like, they're, they're telling no to everybody. Only one person can get the <laughs> that's yes. That's right. Right. <gasps> that's right. Well, I know many, many PhDs who struggle just as much as people with no degree. Yeah, to get work. Exactly. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. So any tips on how to sell yourself? Yeah, um, and oh, let me, let's start with this. Any tips on how to, and you kind of started with this already, but a little bit more on how to stop feeling like 
I can't, I can hear this all the time. I can't market myself. I can't sell myself. I'm an introvert. Right, right. Well, so my tip on that is, what if you were trying to uh, market or sell your best friend? What would you do if you were trying to get your best friend a job? How would you talk about them? You should talk about yourself and maybe practice that first, right? Tell, tell your mirror why you would want your best friend to have a job, right? And now substitute yourself for your best friend. And if you cannot talk about yourself in the same glowing terms you talk about your best friend, you're gonna have to practice till you can. And I know that this feels uncomfortable, especially for people who are introverts, but practice makes perfect. And just same conversation we've been having. You think you can't? Of course you can. You just practice. And it's like a muscle. It's like everything else. The more you do it, the better you get. Like public speaking, all the things that are intimidating. The more you do it, the better you get. And so start by practicing your story, get your story down, and then you just, you practice it in the mirror. And then I recommend, I'm a huge proponent of this, like get a gun, get a group of ladies together for a, for a cocktail night, and then you practice with each other. You have Ooh, to practice that. out loud. You have to practice out loud and just practice out loud until it feels really fluent and comfortable. And right now you could do it via Zoom. Zoom. You can right. have a virtual happy have hour right now, but right. Yes. <laughs> you can have, I mean, have fun right. and record it. Oh, Romy, right. uh, may I steal this idea? I'm and stealing. definitely record it and play it, <laughs> play it back. Cause when you hear yourself, you'll, it'll be cringe worthy, but then you'll find ways to improve. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And when you're having fun and you're getting a little bit looser, even if you don't drink cocktails, you can get a little bit looser with your girlfriends or, you know, other women. Um, oh, Thank you so much. I love that. May I steal it? I'm of course, using it. Of course. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about your business, Fairy God Boss. Yeah. So thank you. yeah. Tell me more about what people can gain by becoming part of that. Yes. Yeah, so first of all, I should see, say it's free to join. So I'd love anyone who wants to, to come join our community. Um, and when you join, you benefit from getting, we have an amazing editorial team. Now I don't write the articles anymore. We have an amazing <laughs> editorial team, much better than I am. And we publish a non, we publish an editor, topical editorial content every day. Um, we also have this amazing community group where women are asking and answering these hard questions. And if you have a question that you're not sure how a situation you don't know how to handle or something that you want to know, great place to ask that question. But even if you don't, our community is really appreciative of people who come and help answer their questions. And a lot of people I talk to, a lot of women, women I talk to say, I really am passionate about helping women in the workplace, but I don't have much time to give. I'm very busy. This is, you can log on and help answer a few questions that women have. And that's a great way to give back in like five minutes or less. Um, you can also leave an oh. anonymous review about your company, your experience at work that will help benefit other women who are thinking about working there. Uh, and if you are a job seeker, we have an enormous resource, over 150,000 jobs, companies that are hiring, use Fairy God Boss to recruit talented women. Oh, that's amazing. So is it fairygodboss.com? Correct. Exactly. And when they go there, they're going to be able to see how to sign up for free? Absolutely. And Romy, I will tell you that I have not done this in the past, but you have so motivated me. I love your mission so much that I'm actually going to go there, sign up and do some giving back myself. I love it. Thank you, Thank Kathy. You so I, I think our... Uh, our audience would really benefit from your advice and, and appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and you mentioned that people can leave information about companies they work for anonymously. Yes. So yeah. good, bad, and all the way in between? Yes. There's actually a 15 question survey. So it's quite nuanced about your experience there. Oh, good. Okay. Cause it's kind of hard to, you know, when I think about that, I have such mixed feelings, all some good, some bad, yes. some in between. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh. Yeah. So that's good. I love that it's nuanced. And if it's something that is difficult to talk about, so for example, sexual harassment yeah. and they want some advice on that, is this a place they could get some support with that? A hundred percent. And that is another really important point is that 
are there there's the ability to always participate in our community anonymously and i think that is a core differentiator for us compared to any of the other platforms out there so you can always be an anonymous member of the fairy god lost community and i have never and i am in a lot of communities and i have reviewed a lot of communities and i have never seen one that's anonymous before so that is truly unique yeah, we, when we were kind of doing the initial research to launch, we realized it was really going to be an essential component of, of what would help women. It was what women needed. We knew that women had these questions and concerns, and the, one of the hardest things was to put their identity next to it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'd had a community like yours back in 1996, when my boss told me that I would never be promoted again, because like you, I wanted to just keep climbing that ladder. And I got stopped at one point for a couple of years. And I asked, why? Why am I not getting promoted? And he said, you laugh and smile too much. And you're <gasps> oh, never going no. anywhere in this company. Oh, no. Yeah. That's awful. I'm yeah. so sorry to hear it. <laughs> so if I had had a place like yours to go to and get advice, I would have known how to handle that. I didn't know how to handle it. It devastated me. I was 40 so years old. so inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> and don't isn't let me tell you what the world needs is people who laugh and smile more <laughs> yeah well i'm really lucky that i had the courage to um, do something about it um, i didn't really want to quit the company but I, I i took him at his word that that was really how people viewed yeah. me and that i wouldn't go anywhere else so i quit um and at 40 started my own business so and i'm really and glad look. that i did in hindsight um, I was never one of those people who thought, I can't wait to be my own boss. How about you? Did you ever have that drive to start your own business or Definitely. did you just fall into it? Definitely. Yeah. But I think for a couple of reasons, number one is I just like the business like gets me going, right? I love mm -hmm. operating. I love, I love mm -hmm. strategy. I love learning about how businesses work. And so for that reason alone, but also, um, I wanted to be at the top, not just because I wanted to like run things or be the boss or excel, but because I like the span of it. I like to be involved in all the different parts. I'd like to be involved in marketing and products and technology and finance. And it's hard to do that if you're not at the very top. Um, right. So, so that was, I think, what was really driving me to want to have my own business. So do you have another couple of minutes because I've just thought of something else I really want to ask you. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. So you, um, you've got a lot going on, Romy. I am so impressed with you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. And here's my question for you. What do you see coming? What's your pr prediction for the future? Oh, that is a tough one. Um, <laughs> I know. If you don't want to answer it, you don't have to, but I think that you probably have your finger on the pulse of what's going on. And I'm, I think you probably agree with me that things are, have shifted a lot very quickly due to COVID. So what do you think is going to yeah. happen? I mean, this is the year, right? Where the things we thought would never come came. Um, exactly. And what I will tell you is that, um, how about this? I don't know if I can predict the future, but I can tell you that I'm really, really pleased to see that these terrible incidences of racial injustice that have been brought to the forefront and the protests that are happening have really come to corporate. And we are seeing real change in the workplace. We're seeing real, real accountability. We're seeing a prioritization of diversity in a way we've never seen before. And I think that is gonna continue. So that is the prediction I can give you. Um, you know, whether- That is so exciting. That is I am exciting. so glad to hear that. Yeah, that is exciting. I think things I, 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 can't, I can't weigh in on because I don't know where to go is, are things like some people think we're going to go much more remote working and companies are not going to go back in person. So I am actually, I'm not sure that that's true. I think um, we will see companies returning in person. So I just think um, those are, but I like, this is the year where I learned it's very hard to predict the future. <laughs> yes, so it is. That, I, I don't know if I can weigh in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's so interesting because uh, today I also interviewed someone who said everything's going to go digital from now on. I am going to tell everybody everything's going to go digital. And I'm like you, I don't think anybody can really predict the future. But my personal hope 
is that number one, just like you're seeing now that diversity continues and increases. And number two, that we get to have a hybrid of those I hope, who want, I hope that too. Yeah. Okay. Good. Those who want to and need to be in person at work can do that. And those who want to uh, be remote can do that. Yeah. I and by the way, true. Romy, you do not yeah. have to, you don't have to worry about sound in the background. Oh, she keeps muting you. herself because her kids are home. <laughs> and I hear the noise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear okay. it. And, um, and even okay. if I could, it wouldn't matter. So you're, okay. you're good. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much for taking this time with me. Kathy, we're going to include, me. yeah, we're going to include fairygodboss.com in the show notes. I'm going to personally go sign up right now Great. and recommend, I recommend everybody do so. So Wonderful. thank you, Romy, we would for love taking that. this time. Thank you, Kathy. Great to talk to you. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.